My name is Sarah Perides. I am an advanced nurse practitioner currently working at the Evelina Children's Hospital in London on the complex movement disorder team. Um, myself and Dr Kaminska would have liked to film this podcast together but we're currently in COVID-19 lockdown so we are filming it whilst being appropriately social distanced. Hi Margaret! Hi Sarah! My name is Margaret Kaminska and I'm a paediatric neurologist. Um, we have been working together with the Complex Motor Disorders team in the Evelina London Children's Hospital uh, for more than 10 years now. The aim of this study recently published in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology, deep brain stimulation reduces pain in children with dystonia, including in dyskinetic cerebral palsy, was to look at the prevalence of dystonic pain in children and then look at the response to deep brain stimulation one year after surgery. This is an observational cohort study. We have assessed 140 children and young people undergoing DBS in our centre over the 10 years for the presence of dystonia-related pain. We have divided them into four groups according to current uh, classification of dystonia. Uh, first, A, inherited dystonia, uh, for example, DYT1, torsion dystonia, or DYT11, dystonia myoclonus. 1B, inherited degenerative dystonias, um, as uh, pantothenian kinase associated uh, neurodegeneration with brain iron accumulation. Um, group 2, acquired dystonia, including a cerebral palsy, and group 3, idiopathic dystonia where genetic etiology is suspected but not confirmed. Uh, we have used six methods of clinical assessment of pain um, before the DBS and one year after DBS. Why so many methods? Pain is uh, difficult to assess, um, frequently um, is perceived subjectively, um, and of course um, bigger difficulties will be encountered when you assess pain in children and in particular in children with neurodisabilities and communication uh, difficulties. Pain outcome measures were applied when um, pain was identified on the initial assessment. They were applied at baseline and one year after DBS. We have used a validated um, uh, tools as um, a numerical pain rating scale, pediatric pain profile, CP child, and uh, three non-validated um, scales, uh, analgesia requirement, a frequency pain scale, and a severity pain scale. For the assessment of um, reduction of motor symptoms of dystonia, we have used BFM, DRS, Berg, Fan, Marsden, Dystonia Rating Scale, and the motor component. So on to the results. 140 paediatric patients were assessed over 10 years, 71 males, 69 females. The median age was 11 years, 11 months, with a range of 3 to 19 years. 63 of those 140 patients, so 45%, reported dystonic pain present before deep brain stimulation. Those 63 patients were grouped into their etiological subgroups. Um, so group 1A, the inherited DYT positive dystonias, we had eight patients. Group 1B, the inherited heridogegenerative dystonias, we had nine patients. Our largest group were the acquired dystonias, which was 37 patients, of which 24 had cerebral palsy. The idiopathic dystonias, so group 3, we had nine patients. Um, also, if you look up to the right-hand corner, you can see where all the different painful areas were reported, um, with the main areas being total body spasms, hips, legs, back and shoulders, which is comparable with orthopaedic complaints, um, which we found interesting. But also it's to be aware that other areas can cause dystonic pain, such as wrists, paws, mouths, toes, and other areas you might not always think to ask about. 
CP chart is designed to measure caregivers' perception of the health-related quality of life of children with severe disability. The lower the score, the greater limitations. We have used uh, here comfort and emotions domain out of six domains um, because of its obvious connotation with um, pain. And data was available for 48 patients and the scores have improved in all etiology group. They were statistically significant um, in all etiology groups, apart from the heredodegenerative um, group. Pediatric pain profile data was available for 17 patients, including 9 uh, with, with acquired dystonias. The most troublesome pain has improved for the whole cohort, and this has reached st statistical significance for the whole cohort and for the acquired dystonia group. The most troublesome pain have, has improved for the heredodegenerative dystonias and idiopathic dystonias. However, this improvement did not reach statistical significance. 27 patients were assessed using a numerical pain rating scale. The good day reported pain and the most troublesome pain has improved in the whole cohort and in all subgroups and these um, results were statistically significant. Moving on to our qualitative scales, looking at pain frequency and severity. Um, patients or their parents or caregivers were asked simple questions such as, how often do you feel pain? And then we gave them a scale, none of the time, some of the time, most of the time, or all of the time. And we also asked the severity using another simple scale, no pain, mild pain, moderate pain, severe pain, and very severe pain. We had very positive results in these areas with persistent pain reducing by 25% and nearly 30%, so 29% no longer experiencing any pain. And that was looking at frequency. Looking at the pain severity, we had a reduction of very severe pain by 30% and 24% went pain free. We saw the same trend in all the subgroups as well as the whole cohort and that's including that acquired group that people often find difficult to assess. So now on to analgesia requirement. Um, we ask all the families what medications they use at every review but for the purposes of this study we are just looking at pre-deep brain stimulation and one year post-deep brain stimulation and just looking at analgesia, including paracetamol, ibuprofen, diclofenic, codeine, morphine and gabapentin. We asked the families whether they used analgesia every day or regularly and then compared it with when required medications and not needed medications. We had great positive results in this group as well. Um, it was really nice to see that daily analgesia reduced by 40% and no analgesia required increased by 46%. And we saw a similar trend across all of the subgroups. Finally, we have compared the improvement of motor symptoms of dystonia measured by the motor scale of Berg van Marsden dystonia rating scale and the improvement of pain scores. BFMDRS did not improve in 30% of patients, but pain scores did not improve only in 10% of children and young people with dystonia. If we look at the table, we can see that um, similar scale improvement was experienced um, in the inherited dystonia group. However, the next one, her degenerative group, uh, experienced a 15% deterioration of BFM DRS uh, score, but at the same time, improvement of 14% on the CP child and 26% on the pediatric pain profile. Uh, acquired dystonia group have improved only about 5% on the BFM DRS score, but in, have improved by 19% on CP child, 31% on pediatric pain profile, and 66% on NPRS. And finally, the idiopathic dystonia group have had improvement of 14% on the BFM DRS score, but 63% on CP child and 79% on pediatric pain profile. So, Pain improved in more patients than BFM-DRS 
and the magnitude of, of improvement was larger for the pain scores than for BFM DRS. So what does this paper add? It's the first international paper looking at dystonic pain in children and systematically assessing it. We have learned that children and young people with dystonia frequently suffer from pain in multiple body parts. We have learned that deep brain stimulation does reduce dystonic pain in children and young people, including children with cerebral palsy. And therefore, our advice would be that dystonic pain reduction could be one of the goals for deep brain stimulation for your patients.